Remember Allah via Muraqaba. There are two forms of dhikr. One is dhikr, which is performed by the tongue. And the other dhikr, the other remembrance of Allah, is via thought, via thinking, contemplation. And when a person remembers Allah by thinking thoughts in the heart, this is called muraqaba, meditation. And in this dhikr, remembrance, the special quality is this, that you have to focus your heart, onto, uh, focus your thinking onto the heart. When an individual does this, when he practices this, when he makes effort on this, that he focuses his thought and fixes onto the heart and remembers Allah. That when the individual works hard on this, makes effort on this, then our Honorable Mashaikh on this, for hours and hours on end, they used to sit down like this and do dhikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah. In a few minutes, or just for a little while to sit down, you cannot attain this result. For every action, you have to make effort. Some of our elders, pious elders, worked so hard, made so much effort on muraqaba that their necks used to bow down and their, their bone used to protrude out on the upper back. And I saw my Hazrat Sahib, Hazrat Shaykh Ibrahimullah, may Allah have mercy on him, that even normal conditions, four hours they used to do muraqaba on a normal day. So muraqaba is the greatest action. You have to work hard for this, make effort for this. Because we, inside our heart, want to have Allah Ta'ala in our heart. Allah's remembrance in our heart. And the heart, we have shaitan there, we have other thoughts there, temptations there, evil temptations there, desires of the nafs. Um, and it's full of other things and strange things. So to extract all of these things, and we say, you know, be, without anything else, we extract everything out from the heart and we bring Allah's remembrance into our heart, embed that into our heart. And this is not the sign of a good heart, that the heart starts to beat. We feel it. This we think is dhikr. That is just the first condition of the dhikr of Allah. You could say physically that praise be to Allah, alhamdulillah. That's the first positional result when the student starts to do dhikr of Allah, that he sees that, experiences that. Or some people, they even say that, oh, I can start to see things yeah, vision during dhikr, we consider that his dhikr is going, progressing very well. Dhikr is this, that apart from everything else, the heart is purified from everything else. And there's no need to say anything. The heart uh, starts to have a dislike for everything. Just like my Hazrat Sahib, my Sheikh used to say that you dislike other things, just like you dislike the stool and the urine, the things that Allah Ta'ala has prohibited us from. Your heart shouldn't even feel like going towards the prohibited things, the wrong actions. You shouldn't even think about it. Not this, that you do the good, uh, not that you think this is azab, this is punishment. That's not the thoughts about di uh, wrong sins. Rather, that if Allah dislikes this action, then how can I like this action? This is the right thinking. That this jahalat, ignorance, how can I like something? If my Rabb, my Lord doesn't like this, then how can I do a haram action? How can that? I can't do this wrong. Yeah, People are forcing you, pushing you towards that influence. That I'm not making you scared. Who is it making us fear this? There's a hadith that the biggest mufti is your heart, your own heart. You don't need to ask for fatwas. When a person's heart is made, then every fatwa comes from the heart. The heart issues the fatwas. When a person does a wrong, dirty action, he starts to sweat. I'm telling you this. That if by mistake you start to do a wrong action, then he starts to sweat in his whole body. Out of shame. So this feeling, this emotion, if you have this, then congratulations, your dhikr has succeeded. Alhamdulillah. And your dhikr is progressing. Always think in your heart that, oh, I don't want to do these dirty actions, these wrong actions, so these evil actions. Allah Ta'ala save me from this. You have a fikr, concern within you, a worry, a feeling, emotion, anxiety. Uh, surrounds you that I don't want to commit sins. But look here, look here. That when there are people who are attached to sins and they're very used to doing sins and they don't even feel it. That for example, I'll give you a person who doesn't pray salah 
and there's a person who prays salah regularly. Look at the difference between the two. The person who prays salah regularly, he'll run. And the person who doesn't pray, oh, leave it, ya, it's okay. He doesn't feel that he's leaving salah. He doesn't even have the feeling, awareness, recognition. This is a basic condition. The same way that one individual, he, his acknowledgement and awareness ends and he's, he doesn't, the whole Qur'an is filled with this same one message that is given to us. The whole Qur'an is, I'm giving the essence, the summary, that don't waste time, don't waste time, make your time valuable, appreciate your time. That's the main, that in whatever situation, on every moment, every second, that for, otherwise you will regret this immensely tomorrow. Allah Ta'ala said, that so much a person is given freedom, so much freedom of time and will you've been given that even your necessities to earn, even for that, Allah says, you don't need to run around. I've written and destined for you that how much is going to arrive to you. I've, I've written, it's in your destiny. Why do you run around here like a headless chicken? Why are you wasting your time? The most important factor of our life, Allah Ta'ala says, don't worry, don't waste your time for that. Rather, it is important. It is important. It is important, your earnings, your wealth, your upkeep, your, your income. We have to think about it. But for this, Allah says, free yourself from this. Detach yourself from this responsibility. I will give to you, Allah says. But you just do one action. Allah says, you detach yourself from this and you just start to do one task. One duty, that I'm going to leave this world. Very soon am I going to leave this world. And for that I need to immensely, for my mal, I need to make palaces in the hereafter. I need to make my house in Jannah, Darajat, and high rank. I want to elevate myself in the hereafter. So when this desire starts to emanate and come to you, and you consider that everything around you in the dunya is artificial, eh? Allah tells us in the Quran, that this house in this world isn't good, the house in the hereafter is good. You're working hard. Don't work hard for the asset building. These two, the, even if you have a two-bedroom house or one-bedroom, but we take riba, consume haram, do wrong actions, and we amass the money. What will you do with that wealth? Yaksaboon Allah says, then the punishment just for that, what you start doing here, I'll give you the punishment here. That's the punishment a person, then he starts to get dunya, then he, he has more punishment in the hereafter, over and above that. So all of this, how does this come, this feeling, when you sit in Muraqaba for hours and you develop your heart. Wahid, this is the soul method, that why we do dhikr, that Allah, dunya comes out of our heart. And worldly things and houses, cars, assets, buildings, wasting time, lahu lahab, just running around for nothing. The pious elders have said a unique statement that I don't even go out. Why, Hazrat Sahib, why don't you go out? He said, when I go out, then everyone looks to me to be deceased, not alive. And this is hadith. He says, it looks like that they've come out of the graves, they're walking around, and not alive. I can't see anybody who's alive when I go out. And not a single person's alive. Why? Because alive is that person whose heart is alive. Whose heart is alive. Yes. And the person who is, is dead, whose heart is dead, you know, eating, cooking, chickens, meat. This doesn't make a person alive, does it? So this emotion, feeling, development comes into a person through the dhikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah. When the student does muraqba and in Naqshban, the order, this is the great achievement, the miracle, the fantastic status of Naqshban, the silsila, where the, the, the other silsila is right, they work so hard all their life, they may attain a result, but Allah said, this is the sadqa of Abu Bakr Sadiq, radiyallahu due to him. Has Abu Bakr Sadiq, that Allah Ta'ala spread this silsila, this order, and developed in such a way, then the beginning of the initiation of the student, if he's a sincere student and he has this right intention here, that I want to extract all other feelings and thoughts and emotions from my heart and the dunya, I want to make my heart simple, I want no secondary desire, I shall have no fikr and concern about earning and food, and I want to be, then you'll be safe from haram, lying, food, deceit. Look, there are two personalities that a person makes. Two personalities we have. One is that that people see us. And one is that we see ourselves. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are two personalities. One is where the dunya looks at you from outside. And we really develop that personality, how people are looking at me, concept of me. What will the dunya say? What will the people say? What will the people around me say? And we keep saying that, the dunya. And there's another side to a person. It's complex that his own personality is so dirty and pure that all 
all the evils are inside him and let him ask him, Oh, today I did Talawat of Quran, I recited Quran, I read in my two rakah salah, Allah him tawfiq, I recited three juz or five juz. But at that time when he's reading the juz, look at his condition inside that person. He's got raya, pretense and hypocrisy embedded in him, nifaq and kibbar and pride is embedded in that person. So he thinks he's worshipping, but the, the negative traits are inside. Do you understand what I'm saying? So take these things out, my friend. Time is very short, my friends, in this life. Don't count the notes and currency. Count your deeds. Yes? Don't count your currency and money. Count your deeds, your actions. Because amal gives success to a person. Good deeds, righteous deeds, pious deeds, no distress about the dunya. Don't run around for money, for wealth. No. Yes, run, helter-skelter. Run, helter-skelter. Only, and, and go on a journey, traveling here, here, and run and roam around the world for which purpose? To seek a wali Allah. That's why you should be going and roaming around in the dunya. Then see the enjoyment in that journey. I remember, mashallah, you are my friends, I'll tell you, that when I went out on this journey to look for a wali Allah, shall I tell you this, share a story with you? This is a true stories I tell you, true stories. So I, I went to a city in Pakistan when I went looking for a teacher. It was a night time and I li- arrived at night time. I think it was 10, 11 p.m. and I took a taxi and I was looking for a wali Allah and I arrived there and I went into the taxi and it was just me sitting. I remember the 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 moon on the 14th night had come out and I was looking at it clearly and it looked at to me that as I could see my sheikh in that moon it was a unique feeling of a person when he's traveling for the sake of Allah he's not you don't worry about the heat or the cold so suddenly I saw a person and it was totally night intense night and he stopped the car in front beautiful illuminated face and he said to me I need a lift and he sat at the back. And then we went to a certain extent. Then he said, stop the car. When I arrived to that maqam, then he stopped the car. And he got off, disembarked. I said, I didn't understand who you were. He said, that I had just had to travel with you. I came to welcome you. And my journey was up to... And say, salam to my sheikh. I'm the abdal of this area, he said to me. I'm the abdal of this area. So this is how those people, Allah Ta'ala receives those people who go out in the path of Allah to seek for Allah. I tell you the truth, that's how you are received and welcome. Make your life precious. Make your life precious in which you have the desire for Allah always that you're thinking about the wali Allah, the sign of Allah, the shaykh. You, and then when you take this step and to get close to a wali Allah, even in that you get enjoyment, you get real satisfaction of life from that. So at least have love for a wali Allah, for a friend of Allah. Why? Because when you love a wali Allah, then Allah Ta'ala will start to love you. Yes, I was amazed at that time. That time I hadn't even started to do dhikr, I had done nothing, no other action. But it was a good intention. Allah Ta'ala likes the intention of that. that what's this desire in his heart? What is he looking for? What's the fikr and concern that this individual has? And just take all other issues out, all other concerns out. Just bring one concern for Allah into your heart. That's it, and your life will be made, my friends. So this is the effort that we do in muraqaba. So focus on the heart and think properly. And inside your heart, just embed the thought of Allah in your heart in such a way that your hand and body is working the dunya, but your heart is a sign to Allah that I'm working, but my heart is focused towards Allah. How will you realize that, that your focus is towards Allah? How will you learn in such a way that, that when you are thinking about Allah, you're focused on Allah, then you, will, then you won't disobey Allah. This is the sign, my friends. Then you won't waste time, you will have shame. Allah is with me, watching me. What am I doing here? My friends, that Allah Ta'ala is with me and I'm sitting, wasting my time. At least I should do dhikr. Yes, so, so much a person's thought is developed that he doesn't even like to waste a moment, a second in his life. He doesn't want to consume haram. He doesn't even want to move his feet or legs towards haram. And he will have no concern about the dunya and trickery and cheating. Look at this. Otherwise, otherwise, if you won't sit with this concern, then your dhikr will also become dunya. Remember this. 
your dhikr remembrance will also become dunya. If we don't have this intention that we want to attain Allah's nearness, remember these two points. That if you want to attain Allah's nearness, then even if you don't do dhikr, it will become dhikr. Remember what I'm trying to say here. If you have the intention that for example, if you're doing dhikr, subhanallah, that if you don't want to attain Allah's nearness, then your dhikr will become dunya. Through that you'll earn mal and wealth and money. If the intentions are right, you'll earn the figure of the dunya. So that dhikr, because you want to earn dunya, material gain, you want to develop your dunya, your life in this world, you want to improve your circumstances, you want to increase your fikrat and thoughts about the dunya. This is a very dangerous punishment in the hereafter for this. Remember this. That you're using dhikr and you're doing dhikr to earn dunya material gain. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is a very dangerous condition. So these two things come, two opposites. If you're uh, during a person doing dhikr, never utilize dhikr. Don't use the wali Allah, the teachers of dhikr to end dunya. Because we've come to the shaykh, the teacher, to, to leave dunya. And you're making a means, the shaykh, the teacher, to earn more dunya, material gain. That's an extreme loss that person is in, I tell you now. Who? He sits in dhikr and, and starts to do dhikr to earn dunya. He is in the, the realm of dhikr. He sits with the teacher of dhikr and he wants to progress in the dunya. And then he won't get progression in the hereafter. He will not get the development hereafter. So then he has done a very big mistake, a big error he's committed. So remember this, do dhikr purely for the sake of attaining Allah's name. You should do dhikr. Yes, we have to assess this, that nothing else should be in a heart apart from Allah. May Allah Ta'ala give us all the ability to work hard on this. May Allah give us success in working effort, making effort this. Allah has brought us here. And may Allah give us the tawfiq to work hard and make effort. Otherwise, we're wasting our time. My Hazrat Sahib said this. Otherwise, your dhikr is a waste. A waste of time. It's totally a waste. If you are earning dunya through dhikr, you're focused on the world, material gain, worldly things, and you just sit down for a while, do tasbih, close your eyes, and sit for a while. You can't attain nothing through this. Result. Take the result from an action. If you don't have the result, the real end point, then what's the point of doing that effort, that physical action? Attain the result and the result for doing dhikr, the result for sitting in the company of a waliyullah is to eliminate the dunya, that's it. Just according to the necessities and that's enough. So inshallah, with this niya, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we are going to do muraqaba. During muraqaba, always I repeat this niya intention. So that our intention can become strong, our intention is focused, that focus yourself, your heart, empty your heart of all thoughts and wasawasa. I always say this, your tongue, attach it to your palate, upper mouth. I'm not saying this, this is the silsila naqshbandi lesson. This is not some tradition I'm telling you here. So that we can understand that this is why we are doing dhikr, to purify and empty the heart of thoughts. So if we're doing dhikr, we start to think about marriage and partnership and parties and functions and business and trade and shops and enterprise and your job and employment. If this is the thought that's coming in your heart, it will come. Then keep extracting it. Keep limiting. Say, la. La. Keep on taking it out. One day will come that it will disappear. It will disappear. Uh, totally. Allah has given the power of dhikr. It will disappear. So your heart, empty of all thoughts, waswasas, evil temptations, keep on shaking it out, dusting it down. And Allah's beloved name, bring it into your heart, not with your tongue, rather with the thought and focus. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim.